Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Aydan Özcan. I'm a professor at UCLA. And today, I'm going to introduce to you a new telemedicine-based technology that would be especially useful for global health-related issues that we're having today. And the way that we do that is actually through imaging of, of uh, uh, cell shadows. And that I'm going to exp explain more. So as we all very well know, today we have around 4 billion cell phones today that are being used. And they exist and work even in the developing parts of the world. What you see here is how it's been uh, growing uh, as a function of time. And if, if you look at the world map, you're going to see that even in South America, even in Africa, you have a significant cell phone. Usage and the networks are all functional. As we know, every year, these cell phones are getting better and better in terms of their hardware and software and the cost effectiveness. So if you look at this entire infrastructure, we can do lots of nice things by adopting this infrastructure, existing one, for solving some of the global health-related issues, such as HIV or tuberculosis, or like malaria. If you had a technology that could attach to a cell phone, for instance, to diagnose malaria, you'd be literally helping a lot of these people living with malaria today in uh, resource-poor settings. The same technology platform could also be utilized for other problems like food or water uh, testing for contamination. So with this existing state, we have numerous opportunities that telemedicine-based devices could solve by utilizing the existing networks. When you look at existing technologies for the same task, we have, of course, wonderful devices that work in our laboratories, but they don't really work as well in resource-poor settings. This is one example, which is actually a flow cytometer. It's a wonderful device, except that it costs a lot. Not only the machine itself, but the running costs are beyond what we can afford in, for instance, Africa. Each test would take 5 to $10, which is not what we can do. So replacing this technology with telemedicine-based technologies would be very uh, important, and that's what my group at UCLA has been doing over the last few years. For the same task, of course, for centuries we have been using microscopes. They were great, but they're still bulky, hard to miniaturize and put on a cell phone, for instance, or attached to a cell phone. And more importantly, they use these lenses and other optical components that are not really necessary for this purpose. And my group's work actually solved this problem to miniaturize microscopes without using any lenses, without using any ex expensive or bulky components. So for this task, my group has been working on a technology that can literally put a microimager and attach it to a cell phone in a very lightweight, cost-effective, and compact platform, all of which are needed for telemedicine applications. What you're seeing here are some prototypes of my, my group. And uh, the underlying technology behind this is actually called LUCAS. It stands for Lens-Free Ultra-Wide Field of View Cell Monitoring Array Platform based on shadow imaging. The shadow imaging part is the real important part because instead of imaging the cell with a lens, we image its shadow. This is wonderful because, as you would all very well know, the most expensive part of a camera or microscope would be the lens. That's why you have expensive cameras come with a very large piece of lens in front. We get rid of that totally. It saves us money and weight, such that it becomes extremely compact and cost-effective, at the same time very sensitive. Unlike our own shadow on a sunny day, which is pitch dark, and that's why it doesn't show any useful information, cell shadows, on the other hand, are very useful. They contain a texture that is the fingerprint of the cell, and if you detect this thing fingerprint, which we technically call hologram, you would be able to detect the cell type and understand if there was a deformation on it, or you could be able to reconstruct a microscopic image of the cell from these simple cell shadows that we were able to image with our devices. These are some examples 
of whole blood samples that you would be able to image with our devices, what you see mostly are the shadows of red blood cells because our blood is mostly composed of red blood cells. And every now and then you would be seeing some lymphocytes, neutrophils, which you could count for uh, different purposes. Acquiring these cell shadows, we then look at their pattern and understand their type. You could at this stage very well think that what if the cell shadows start to overlap in your camera, such as this one? Because these are very nice textures that contain the holographic information of the cell, actually we have got fairly powerful softwares that could undo this overlap to get the exact image of the cells through digital computation without the use of any lenses. We could do this even with an extensive overlap, as in this case, we could still reconstruct the images of the cell. What can you do with this technology in the field? You could diagnose disease like sickle. These are the holograms of some patient blood. And from these holograms, from these shadows, you could go back digitally to the image, as I'm doing with my pointer right now. And from the cell signatures, you can tell if the person has an abnormal red blood cell shape. You could do the same thing for complete blood count. You could tell the differences between different white blood cell types and count them to understand more of the, uh, the um, uh, immunity of the patient. These are different white blood cells and their shadows, their reconstruction, and that tells a lot to, a, to an MD if you have the count of these. The same technology could also be used to count and to look for bacteria like E. coli in a water sample, such as the one that I'm showing here. You're probably looking for the first time to the shadow of a bacteria like E. coli, which would make you sick if you um, randomly get it. So the same technology could really go sub-micron, one millionth of a meter in terms of uh, accuracy and specificity to look for uh, very tiny particles. And one final example that I'm going to quickly go over is actually HIV. The same technology holds significant promise to be used for HIV positive patients to monitor their um, health condition. And that's a technology that would mostly impact people in, of course, Africa. For HIV positive patients, we need to monitor their health every few months for understanding how well their immunity is doing. One way of doing this is actually counting of CD4 T lymphocytes. That's a white blood cell type, which helps us to understand if, uh, if the therapy is working or if the immunity of the patient is, is, is low. To do this, of course, a technology like this would not really work. So replacing this with a technology that's attached to a cell phone that could do this in the field would be enormously useful. And these are some of our results for counting of CD4 and CD8 lymphocytes for an HIV positive patient in this case, which matches very well with existing te technologies, only much more cost effective, lightweight, and of course mobile attached to a cell phone. The same technology is also applicable to various other developed country problems as I've listed here. So to summarize, I've introduced to you a technology which is absolutely lens-free. It works based on detection of cell shadows rather than their images. And that's why it's very cost-effective, compact, and lightweight that you can, as you can see, uh, carry in your pocket. With this, I'd like to conclude and acknowledge my funding agencies and my students. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me here.